G'day guys, welcome back. I am doing a flip cut pour for you today. Nice big one. I'm hoping I'm going to have enough paint in that because this only holds uh, 540 mil. So it'll be a full one and then I can put a little bit of extra paint around the outside because I think I made about uh, maybe 550 grams. So we'll see. Uh, but before I get started, I know you guys like to see the finished products, dry products. So this is the painting I did for the Australian Acrylic Pouring Group channel, uh, channel, um, challenge. So that was uh, those beachy colours. Uh, I think I've still got the sheet. Let me have a quick look. There it is. These colours here. So a navy, a light blue, you could either go white or cream and then like a beige and then a, a brownish colour, brownie caramel sort of colour. So that was my inspiration and my take on that. So yeah, all done. Uh, it came out really, really pretty. It's dried really well, no problems. Mine don't change really from when I leave you. And say goodbye to the finished product yes they dry and they get slightly ever so slightly darker because the paint dries a touch darker but apart from that they don't change at all okay now inspiration from today's um, pour is the lovely karen uh, she did a like a jungle inspired pour i think she might have done three or four on the one day and I loved it. I've never used these colours. They're not colours that I would choose myself. You guys know I love blues. But it looked so good that um, I thought I wanted to see if I could recreate it. Now the colours I couldn't match. She had like this dark rusty sort of a colour. Um, I can't get that here in Australia. So I've just kind of mixed a couple of colours to try and get a similar Pour. And you guys know that you can try and re uh, replicate pores and very, very rarely will you get the same as what you've done previously or tried to do. Uh, I am using 65% glue, 35% water. I've started using 65 and 35 instead of 70, 30. It's just that the, the global colours the paints that are coming through seem to be a lot thicker than they used to be. So I'm having to make my pouring medium thinner and add extra water too. It's so annoying. Just when I get my recipe down pat, they change things. So one-to-one, -one, I start one-to-one -one with the pouring medium and the paints. And most of these I've had to add water to. Uh, it's, ge it's generally the sort of orangey, reddish, um, like the warm tones that need the extra water, I don't find that I need it with the cool tones, so which is a bit bizarre. Righto, I'm gonna just get started. I haven't added any silicone yet. Um, treadmill lubricant, 100% um, silicone. So that's it there. Uh, now I've got the black, the rust, the yellow, the brown, the white and um, an orange red so this one hasn't got very much paint in it i'll just do one one two three one two three one two three four you can have a little bit more because you've got more paint in you um i think that'll do so this is this color is basically warm red with just a little blob of cool red in it just to darken it up a little bit the white is just my regular white and I've had to add water to that I'll climb up and show you the consistency in a minute after I've stirred everything it's just leaving a little mound You will get better cells, better rings around your cells if your mix is a little bit thinner. 
Now, Karen, if you're watching, I would like you to do, if you want to, a little experiment and just thin out your mix just a touch more. And I want to see if that helps with your caterpillar problem. <laughs> I found that when my mix is thicker, I get more caterpillars, and if I thin it out, I don't. So I don't know. Look, it's just something if you want to try, have a try. Let me know. I'd be interested to see because you seem to get caterpillars, and I don't know why. <laughs> Perhaps she doesn't mind me saying that. Uh, my black's thickened up just a touch. I'm going to add a little blob more water. Blacks and whites always seem to take more water than the other colours I've found. Now I've only got the one cup, so I'm going to just do, obviously, maybe two layers. I want them relatively big layers. I've oiled my cup with the spot on. Well, actually it wasn't the spot on, it was just the um, spray silicone. I'm going to do my layers a little bit thicker today. And if I've got a little bit of paint left, that's okay. I'll just pop it around the sides. So the black first. Now this is the rust. Um, so it's basically these two mixed together, the warm red, the cool red, and then a little blob of black. The yellow I make myself. Um, I don't know if it's Naples yellow or not, but that's it there. It's yellow with a little bit of brown and a little bit of white. The brown is burnt sienna. And yeah, I think I've told you about the rest of them. So we'll get them out of the way. Now let's do the rusty colour next. Bring it down here so I can actually see into the cup. And because it's a big cup, I'm going to do bigger layers. And then the yellow. It takes quite a bit of paint to cover each layer because it's obviously it's a bigger cup. It's got half my yellow gone. And then the brown. I hope I stirred my oil enough. I was talking, I wasn't concentrating. Stir your silicone in really well, guys. White. See how the paint spreads nicely? It's not um, sort of staying like in a mound. It's spreading nicely. Go back to some black so we can have some grey in the painting. And then this little bit of bright red. I haven't got much of it, so I'm just going to pop it in the one layer there. I'm trying to cover my layers so that you don't see the other paint. When I'm doing five flip cups, I don't really worry about covering the paint, you know, because I've got so much paint to put in there, I just drizzle it in and hope for the best. It all gets blended so well. So uh, with this bigger cup, see what happens with the bigger layers. Um, and then I'll finish off the white. So I did my first private tutorial video which was very exciting I wasn't sure how it was going to be received um, I've had a lot of thumbs down Ta -da! not to my tutorial video but for my ad for the tutorial video like really guys you know there's 490 free videos on my channel and I put up one saying it's going to cost you $14 US to watch my one hour um, fully inclusive tutorial video. And um, 
yeah, get thumbs down. So that's not very nice, is it? I don't think that's very nice at all. What do you do? Um, oh, what do I put in next? I think I'll put in a little bit more yellow. And then, but yeah, I mean, I enjoyed doing it and I think it's helping a few people and it's just a shame that I'm getting so many thumbs down. I don't know why people give thumbs down. Like if you don't like something, just move on. You know, why do you have to diss them? Trying to make a little bit of money out of all the, you know, the 490 <laughs> videos that I've made it's cost me thousands of dollars you know what's wrong with trying to get a little bit of that back I, I don't think that should be an issue um, now I don't want to put black next to yellow because it goes that sort of baby poo greenish color so let's just finish off the brown anyway that's my little gripe for today it did kind of upset me that I was trying, you know, to help people and then they do that to me. So I was a little bit upset. I thought about removing everything and just not bothering with the tutorials. But I guess out of 2,000 or 3,000 views, 50 thumbs down isn't too bad. But hey, 50? Come on, guys. <laughs> it's a lot. I'm going to see if I can fit all this in here, finish it off. Okay, get the rest of that black out of my just gonna fit, hey. That was good. I'll have to work out how much paint I made. Maybe it was five uh, 550 grams. Get that black paint off my hands. Oh look, this is gonna be am I gonna fit any more in there? <laughs> it's gonna overflow! It's gonna overflow quick! Quick! Oh, I'm just making a big mess, a big fat mess. I'm just going to pour this around. Okay, keep just a tiny little bit just in case I need it for my corners. I've got paint all over my arms from doing that. It's always handy to have a, a damp cloth. So that you can wipe your hands. Hey, such a messy business. Now, the other thing, I'm going to try and do, again, what Karen did and try and do that flip and lip. Okay, Karen, <laughs> wish me luck. I haven't done it before. Because <laughs> normally I just do, you know, a big flip and I just get that beautiful blended background with some cells. And then I specifically like doing my flip and drags to get the stripies. So if I do this, I'll get a few stripies. All right. I don't need to wait for the paint to go down because it's already down. I hope that's rust colours, the correct colour. Oh, look at that cell. Okay. Now, what do I do? I just flip it and then leave it and then run the cup through it. Is that what I do? A lot of um, oh, I must have made my white too thin. See that? That's what happens when my white's too thin. I don't want any more white through it. Um, let's take it through there again. Okay, that'll do. <laughs> I hope that was all right. Oh, I don't like these. Okay. Just cover. I always cover the surface a little bit. I tend to do one half um, and then torch. I just find that um, stops the cells from overstretching too much. So I'll go over the one, the one side. 
and then torch. Okay, where's my torch gone? I really don't like that white stuff. I'm going to have to redo it. My white was too thin. Overcompensated. See, I've got this white lacing and I've got these. This, this is awful. Awful, awful. This bit here. too thin and that's what happens when your mix is a bit too thin you get um, like those scaly looks but we will pers persist and see what happens hey not to torch so much um, less have less cells yeah, less is more so at this stage once you've torched your cells should still be uh, they shouldn't be so tiny that you know they don't they don't even have rings they should have rings around them they should be a decent size if they're too small and you don't have the rings your mix is too thick so you need to have those rings. If you're not getting the rings, that's because your mix is too thick, okay? That's what I found. Lots of experimenting. Oh, this is gonna be a problem. Problem child. Run some off. Put a blob on. I always run some off first, otherwise you get like a circular sort of a piece. Uh, that red, the bright red's really taken over. My dark red, my rusty colour. Oh, I can hardly see it. There's a bit there, there's a bit there, but this bright red, whoa, it's really taken over. This is pretty. Love that side there. Just don't like that white in the middle. You are being scrapped. Yes, you are. Oh, look, there goes my red. The only bit of red that I liked, that I had, is gone. Okay, off we go to that last corner. See so if we can get rid of some of that white. Pour a little bit of the rust on the corner there. Had a little bit left in my cup. Well, that looks like a hot mess, doesn't it? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. The cells are a good shape, you know, and they're nice colours, but that white, oh, that's just doing my head in. And it's definitely not dark enough. Okay, definitely going to have to try again. See all those, those white scales? Got some white lacing happening over there. It's just too thin. I put too much water in it. Overcompensating. I wish I had more of this dark colour. And that red, that bright red, whoa, did that take over. But look, I'll put the video up because it's a learning curve, isn't it? We all learn. And you guys can let me know what you think. But I'm going to do it again. Just fix up my little corners there. Run the palette 
knife around. Oops, missed a tiny little dot there. some really pretty sections in it this this here those are really nice colors that is gorgeous that whole corner actually that that third that's good just don't like that bright red and that white scaly stuff and the white's doing weird things here too too thin that's why righty oh let me take you down for a close-up and go again make a few little changes with my mix and my colors um, less white yeah i just don't know if it's all those um wavy patterns are my thing don't know too early to to judge just yet So these cells here are really pretty. So they've got the yellow ring around the rust colour. Those are really pretty. And that corner down there, see I wanted more like that, more black. I probably needed more black, less white. I make, might make up half the amount of white. And even though I only had a tiny little bit of that red, it really took over. See what I mean about that white? See how it's kind of gone scaly? They're trying to develop cells, but it was too thin, so they all just bumped into each other. See how the cells kind of pop out the side of the ribbons? See, I don't know if I like that or not. It's just how they are when you do these. This particular style where you run your cup through the painting so there you go hope you've learnt something <laughs> thanks for listening to me whinge have a bit of a whinging day all right oh uh, i'm going to do this again and i will see you soon bye for now